Well, balloons are rockets too, and they work by jet propulsion, just like the real ones. The trouble is they go zipping around in this unguided fashion, making these very vile noises. Wouldn't it be splendid if you could make a balloon rise majestically into the air the way the space shuttle did? Well, if you're very careful and very patient, and you're used to, or like a bit of fiddling, you can do just that. And it doesn't require much other than patience, except for a cereal packet, an old one, a bit of uh, clear sticky tape, and scissors, and of course a balloon. And here's what you do. First of all, let's look at the problem. If you blow a balloon up and let it go, you notice two things. Nearly <laughs> got away from me there. Okay, let it go and watch the neck and you get this. Much vibration. And that's uh, the noise you get. And of course the vibration throws the neck around, which is why the balloon goes off in strange directions. Like that, because it's most unguided. What we have to do is to control both of those. Let the air out smoothly and stop the vibration. And secondly, give the balloon some sort of mechanism that makes it always stay pointing upwards. And hopefully it'll rise like that. Well, here's how we do it. First of all, get a balloon. That's not a very attractive colour. Let's start with something that's easier to see the cardboard against. We'll start with an orange one. If you cut yourself a strip of cereal packet, and I use that because it's about the right sort of weight, and weight's all important in this, you want to cut that ribbon just so that it's as wide as the balloon neck is long. In fact, just a little bit narrower than the balloon neck's long. See where the balloon starts to get wider? Come back a little bit and cut the ribbon like that. And this is what we'll get. It doesn't have to be awfully long, but make it the same distance all the way along the ribbon. That looks about, or a bit narrow, that looks about the right width. Okay, cut it off round about there. Trim it up. Now, we want to curl that into a tube. And for that, uh, a pencil is pretty good. Just wrap the cardboard around the, the pencil like that and keep on rolling it and you'll find it forms a nice cylindrical tube. Now, what you want is for the size of that tube to be pretty well the same as the rubber ring on the end. If it's too big, the balloon comes out of it. If it's too narrow, it cuts off all the air. So hold it about the right size and put the scissors down like that and snip through. And then if you stick it together like that, you'll have a tube of the right size. Well, sticking together is very important. If you get the sticky tape, you'll need to wrap it round, probably all the way around the tube, but certainly at both ends, and do it like this. Do it so that get my fingers out of the way, the sticky tape runs all the way around the tube and sticks to itself. And that gives a very, very strong end. If it hasn't got that strong end, then it's the balloon, when it's blown up, simply pulls that tube apart. Let's do it at this end as well. And then we'll put a quick one around the middle of the tube, and we'll see what that does. There we go. Secure at both ends. That'll probably do it. Okay, you have to poke the balloon into that, and I use a pencil for that, not the sharp point, because we'll put a hole in it. It comes through there, and now you'll notice if I blow that up, it should stay in the tube. And if I let it go, the air will just rush straight out without making it vibrate. And so that's the first problem solved. Now we need the fins to guide it up into the air. Well, for those, cut yourself some panels of this... Uh, cardboard and you want four fins that are as narrow at the thin end as the sticky tape and about the same size as the collapsed balloon. And this may vary, of course, balloons come in different propulsive powers depending on the maker and they vary as you blow them up and the cardboard of course will be different thicknesses and this is where you need to fiddle but four fins are about that size, about the size of a collapsed balloon. And then you just get sticky tape onto the thin end the sticky tape's behaving erratically. I'll just get rid of that rubbishy bit. Sticky tape onto the thin end, and you stick each fin, remember there'll be four of them, about a centimetre up from that rubber ring. So they'll be clustering all the way around. Well, to save time, I've got one, and the finished article will look like that. Only the colour of the balloon has changed. And when you come to blow the thing up, you just turn it up like that, you can get to the rubber ring, 
and blow it up like that. Hold your finger over there, let it go, fix the fins in position and see what happens. Well, you'll find all sorts of variations. If the fins aren't heavy enough, this is a variation I was trying, it isn't awfully good, I think. If they're not heavy enough, you'll still get an erratic balloon. Something like this. That's no good at all. If they're too heavy, it won't get off the ground. But you can experiment and try variations. Here's a, a two-fin model. We'll see what happens here. Okay, get the fins in position, see what happens. Not bad. Came over again. For my money, though, the old four-fin job takes the prize. So we'll just see if we can get a perfect launch. Finger on the end, turn it over, get the fins into position, and here we go. I want to know.